What's going on guys, big welcome to you all to our channel, we are Team Crushing the Mets here with the boy and we are back with another Spike with a video, this time we'll talk about the premium decks. So I've already covered up the standard decks on our channel as in the deck that we play right now, the deck that I was able to win the uh, Spring Fest, Thank You Fest with, and then also the, the upcoming Rising Nova deck in standard with a new support from the uh, Booster Set 10. Right, so we've already covered that up. If you haven't seen those videos, the link will be in the description section below for you guys to check those standard decks out, especially the one from Rising, because a lot of people requested that deck, and um, I think that that is the strongest build that I could create that works for me, so you guys could try it out and see. Because when it comes to standard, there are actually two builds that you could make with the Rising. One is playing the Juggernaut Maximum, and the other one is making the deck more consistent and not playing the Juggernaut Maximum. Alright, let's jump into this video. In this video, we'll talk about the premium decks when it comes to Spike. So, we have the premium decks past the premium collection 2020-20, introduction of Sazan, the introduction of Tempest Sphere, and then, of course, we also have the premium decks past the uh, set 10 which then we have rising and all of our new support so we'll talk about all of those in this video if you are new to the channel don't forget to subscribe to the channel like the video if you like the video give us a thumbs up and in the comments section below for today it's up to you guys to say which deck you want to see next those votes with the votes that we got on facebook Put all of those together and then we will make the right order of the videos that we will show you guys. So which of the decks that I will show you in this video do you really want to see next? First, we will talk about past Premium Collection 2020. So a lot of you guys are actually very hyped to talk about the decks that we have in set 10. But how about the decks that we could create right now? I mean, what does your current Spike Brother deck look like in Premium? For me, there are two directions that you could take when it comes to Spike Brothers. You have the aggro and you have the turbo. It always happened like that um, when we got the V support, right? The, the first time we got V cards, we created the Agrius deck, the aggro deck, and some people went back and created the GB8 deck. And some people kept playing Rising, but it wasn't as good as it was before because you were losing shield being your great ones were only 5k, you you relied on trigger with effects. Triggers with effect were only uh, they give only 5k power, but they all also weaker in shield value, and you lose because of all of that. And that's why the rising decks are not as strong as the V decks are when it comes to mixing V with G for Spike Brothers. So when we got our first wave of support. People created the, the Agrius deck, the, the Standard Plus deck, uh, the deck that played Mega Instructor, that some decks still played Star. And with that, we actually kept playing it very easy. It, it was a very cheesy deck. A lot of people even got to wards with it. It was two years ago. And the deck was very strong and was really, really aggro. Some others, like me, kept playing the Turbo deck. Why? The turbo deck is different than the aggro deck in the way that you actually do not have to rely on aggroing your opponent to win. It's, it's up to you. You actually choose the tempo of the game. You can't say, hey, I will not give my opponent any damage and then you finish them off during the GBA turn. You could rush them and then finish them off during the GBA turn or before that. And it was pretty much up to you to do whatever you like. If you played against Dark Uriculars, then it was good to play the Turbo it was not that good if you played the aggro or you have to be lucky and they would have to be unlucky. If your opponent gets a heal or two in the early game, then the aggro deck becomes also less effective. Until we got good end with bad end. When we got bad end dragger in V, things changed when it came to the aggro because then you could play good end and good end, bad end with the combination of bull spike, the deck became very strong. You could make multiple attacks uh, in one turn, you get the markers, you move the markers, you draw, you retire, you get field control, you did way more. You create a soul as well, which is good, especially when now we got the Vermios, our strife on the Premium Collection 2020. That Acro deck became also very strong. But when it comes to Turbo, 
Turbo got Zazan. And even though Zazan is at 1, Zazan does do a lot for the Turbo as well as Tempest. Why? Because giving you the GB1, you only need one. The GB1 means that instead of 3 G guards, you only uh, instead of 4 G guards to get GB8 for strike, you only need 3. Instead of getting after your first strike, getting three heals to the hand, you only need two. And Zazan give you draw power. Zazan give you the ability to rush if you want to rush. The same for Stampus Spear. You could just use it. You could flip something face up, which the card that you lost, which is Tempest Spear itself, if you didn't get any vanilla to your hand, you will get back during the first strike turn because you already got one extra card face up in your G zone, right? So pretty much these two cards gave a lot to the to the turbo deck and made the turbo deck also more balanced and more fun to play but when it comes to aggro we also have seen aggro build that runs tempest spear and then you could kind of turbo and aggro so zazan and tempest spear actually made both decks very interesting and then we also have the grade 3 pre elemental right the chain ride let's say or spear ride that you could do with that well, I'm not sure about that deck. I myself did try it out a little bit. I have also all the cards, but I didn't feel that it was as good as the others because it kind of needed counter blasts to work and you kind of also needed the right cards for it to work. But I think it's also a deck that is also very good and lots of fun to play. So that's that. So when it comes to premium collection 2020 and the decks that we could create right now, I think that there are four decks that we could create. You could create pure turbo that doesn't play Zazan or Tempest Spear. Pretty much rely on, uh, let's say, your Jelly Beans, your Mega Trainer to get those studly heals to the hand. And pretty much from that moment on, you could turbo and then you could run a bunch of other cards that help the deck to work very really good. You have the ability to run Wonder Boys. You also have cards like Larook that you could play in your Great One lineup because you have space. Um, and with that, the deck is very good defensively, it's very good defensively, and it's a pretty strong deck by its own. Then, you could mix it up a little bit. So the second deck that you could create is a turbo deck, but then you could add Zazan to it, which makes it a more of a balanced turbo deck, that you have some vanillas, and you could get that GB1, right? You could also add Tempest Spear to the deck, but you could also change the deck around. Take out chili beans, run the V heals, the vanilla heals, and then run Tempest Spear, run Sazan, and then change the deck around and make it more of a vanilla build, which could mean it's more of an aggro turbo that works, right? So that's the third deck that you could create, more of an aggro turbo. First one was a pure turbo, the second one was kind of a balance, like a turbo mixed up a little bit with uh, Zazan and a third deck that you could create is more into Tempest Sphere, more with the Cray Elementals or not, it's up to you. But uh, with that you actually create more of a rush deck that plays more vanillas but also the vanilla heals that you could add to your hand with your Tempest Sphere. And last but not least the fourth deck in my eyes is of course the Agrius deck. The Agrius deck or let's say the deck that runs good and bad and Fermios as their killer stride when you stride into it, especially the second stride whenever you get the two markers or after your uh, bad and good end turn. So those are the four decks that you could create right now. Now it's up to you guys which of the four decks you want to see. You could comment in the comment section below and with the votes to got from Facebook, uh, we actually could make a video for you guys, a deck um, profile for you guys. To showcase the deck and maybe after that also make a, a play a match so you could also see the deck in action. Now we talk about past Phantom Dragon Aeon as set 10. Okay, what happens now? As we all know, of course they are the aggro and the turbo, but more happens because now we got Rising. And Rising himself, of course, was already a G deck. So all of those Rising cards are viable again. That's the illusion. They're actually not. And I will tell you why. Some of them are and some of them are not. And the reason why some of them are not is that you still need charge for most of those abilities. You need to still 
charge unit to call charge unit a lot of people just say well Frograder got so insanely good yes it could but you still need to play charge units for Frograder to still be as good as he is because he will never restand if you don't call a charge unit in front of him so if you play uh, rising star if you play instructor and then you even if you play analyzer like you could make some crazy combos right there but uh, without that you could not use the full ability of Frograder, or actually, you could never restand Frograder. So, when it comes to this, let's start with the Turbo Dex. So, we still have the pure Turbo, right? You could just add Rising to the deck, and the deck becomes better. Just by adding only Rising, the deck becomes better. But we have, um, like, the Acrobat Verde, Rona, uh, Ambush Dexter, all of those cards help with the with the gba deck how about our rare grade 2 brunch like the card is amazing he does a wonder boy he draw you a card he lets your opponent intercept he goes to soul i mean he does a lot for the deck as well so the pure turbo will also become better as you have more space to run those amazing support cards that we have got but just by adding rising to the deck that's more than enough to make the deck very strong because Rising just give you Force 1 and Force 2, which means those attacks that you make for your GB8 turn now could have Force 1 and Force 2. Also, you could switch it up. You could now also say, yo, I will finish them off with something different than the GB8 because the deck will have a very strong base, like Kagero, have a very strong base. You don't really have to rely on this. You could still even rely on just Rising to finish up on top if you don't want to stride or if you can't stride. But then we also have Sazan and Tempest. Okay, those two cards will always make the GBA deck better. And now because we could take out cards like Jelly Beans and we could just play Tempest Sphere and we could just add in the heals and add in some vanillas and add in aggro cards, the deck works. The deck works wonders because it's still good. Like, it, it still works. The only thing is, right here, Tempest Spear, its weakness is it needs Counter Blast. And depending on the format, if Dark Regulars would be, again, a strong clan, or if you would play in a format that your opponent will not give you a lot of Counter Blast, it would be hard for you to activate it once or twice. And also, you would have to change your starter around a little bit. So, those are all things that makes Tempest Spear actually a little bit less good. But the deck in general, as in the Turbo decks, will become better because of the new cards. How about the Cray Elemental deck? Well, as I said before, in my eyes, the Cray Elemental deck is not the strongest. It's the fun build, but it I, I don't really see it played that much for myself. If you guys would try it out, try it out, enjoy it. If you want to see a build with it, I could show you my build. But as I said, I didn't even finalize that build yet because... I didn't feel like it was uh, it was necessary to finalize because it is not the strongest. That again, that's my own idea. If you guys don't agree with me, also let us know in the comment section below. Show us your deck build. I could try it out and see how that works. Now we get to the aggro, and this is where things get interesting. Although I love Turbo, although is Turbo one of my favorite decks to play when it comes to Spike Brothers, with the new Rising, the aggro decks became way more interesting to play. Just having the Force 1 and Force 2, moving them around with Ag with Agrius, uh, or moving them around with a combination of, let's say, uh, Bad and Dragger, with Good and Dragger, with Bull Spike, it's, it's insane, right? Because you could just go from Bad and Dragger to right into the Rising, and then right on the top of that with Bull Spike. And with that, you pretty much create two more force ones and a force two and you have one extra attack from uh the bad and dragger but as long as you have cards like star and instructor you're good to go you are good to go because you could still use those and one of the craziest things is that you could skip on uh the skill of uh you, you could skip on the bull spike altogether, and then you could do uh, bad and dragger, and then you ride a bad and dragger on the bad and dragger, and it rises with a good end skill. And with that, if you have a frog raider on the field, you have rising, which means you create two force two markers, and you 
create one more force one because uh, you still have rising that gives two markers and with that you could kind of still restand your um, your frog grader using instructor and star you see there are so many combos that you can do with the Aquarius deck. Like you have the good end combo with bad end, with bull spike, with rising, and then you also have Fermios, which became way better now that rising gives two markers because you could go for him on the first stride if you could create soul, and then you could put two markers, force one and a force two, and with that, again, you're good to go. Like rising does so much for the deck. But how about a new deck that you could create? You also could create the Bloody Ogle deck. That because Rising could target him, he could Legion with the, with the Frozen Ogle, and you pretty much could play that combo if you want to. You could still combine those with the Bull Spike, and you could still move the markers with those amount of attacks that you could make, which is another insane deck that you could build and play. You have the counter charge engine when it comes to the deck because you have the new great one rare but you also have uh, cards like uh, tier who could also counter charge there are so many things that you could do in spike past phantom dragon aeon so how many decks or how much different decks could we create when it comes to the turbo it's kind of the same we have the pure turbo and we have the balanced turbo and we have the aggro turbo those three decks the same as we had before three decks pure balanced aggro all turbo three turbo decks the same as before the same as before this whole set but now those decks become better the, the build change a little bit but it's still the same concept then we come to the aggro build when it comes to the aggro build you could play a build focused on good end and bad end and formios which is the build that we have right now still good but you could do it better with adding rising to the mix if you add rising to the mix that would mean sometimes you have to choose between rising and bull spike and sometimes you have to choose between not riding into good end at all just skipping good end and going into rising right away and then going to formios so you will have different strategies in one deck but I would not say that the deck would be very different if you focus more on good end or focus more on Vermeos. Agrius will always be in there as a support card. But I would not say that the deck will be different focusing more on Vermeos, Rising, uh, good end with bad end. I, I would not say that. I think that you we could put all of those in one deck and we could try it out and the deck would still work and we would have different strategies to go with but you would have to play like a, uh, three copies of uh, Rising Nova, three copies of Bad and three copies of uh, Bull Spike, something like that or maybe two copies of Bull Spike and then adding two more copies of Star and then you would play 3, 3, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. You play 10 grade 3s, which is okay. More than 10 is not okay, but 10 grade 3s should be fine. So you could do that, but you could also take out the bull spike to focus more on uh, on the combination that you do with, uh, with good end uh, without the bull spike. Pretty much up to you, as I said. If you want to see my build, let us know in the comment section below. I will show you my build, which is more of putting all of those decks together, but maybe with time you could skip one of the combos and then make the deck more consistent so that's the one aggro deck that we have bunch of strategies put into one if you want to divide that into different builds you could do that as well what you would do then is you focus on one strategy so you say i will focus on formios and with that you play four copies of rising nova uh, and then you also play three copies of star or two copies of star and then you add a support grade three to the deck which could mean you add uh, a good end a bull spike pretty much up to you pretty much up to you what's your plan b be like if you ask me i would say your plan b should be good end because good end give you soul with bad end and that's good because then you create soul for formios on the next turn you could kill them you could do that if you want to take out uh, star altogether you could do that and then you could just play the 333 as a set so again up to you guys to do whatever you like you could also play four copies of uh, rising nova 
three copies of Bad and Dragger, two copies of Paul Spike, will still be set to go, still be good, still be playable. Then we have the deck that plays the Ogles. The deck that plays the Ogle would need four copies of Rising Nova, then you add the Ogle to the deck, two or three copies, and then you add Bull Spike to the deck, as Bull Spike is the one card that you want to copy so you could move the markers around. How good is that deck? Well, it's more of a fun deck, if you ask me, I don't think that the deck is, would be very, very, very effective. Reasons, it would be defensively weaker, and also offensively, you need the Counter Blast to do your Ogle shenanigans, uh, even if you say, well, we have good Counter Charges, yes, I know, but you still need that, and you need hands. So, all in all, the two decks that I see played the most are actually more of a aggro build that as i said that focuses more on using fermios with with the rising nova and i also still see the gb8 build played that plays tempest and zazan because that build will also be very strong as we create more markers we could rush the opponent but we could still add those vanillas to the hand which is good defensively so Again, pretty much up to you guys. Which decks do you want to see? Let us know in the comment section below and we will try to make those decks for you guys and talk about them. And that's actually it. That's actually it for this video. I'm not showing you actual deck lists. Those are kept for the actual deck profiles. But in this video, I gave you the general idea of the decks that came past the Premier Collection 2020 and then the decks that came after that. And if you ask me, we should start with the decks of the Premium Collection 2020 because uh, some there are some tournaments that are going on right now, like shop challenges, and I think it's good to talk about those decks for now. But if you guys want to jump into the uh, the Phantom Dragon Aeon sets, you could do that. It's pretty much up to you. For me, I have all the decks ready. I've tested all the decks. It's up to you guys to choose whichever you want to see next. All right, guys. Thank you all for watching, thank you for the support you give to our channel, don't forget to let us know in the comment section below what do you want to see next of these decks, and also what's your favorite if you already have tried some out, what's your deck list, you could tell us all of that, most of you guys talk to me on Facebook as well, keep doing that, I love it, like opening up my inbox and talking to you guys is always a good thing, so that's it, thanks again for watching, until next time.